Have you ever wondered how time travel was possible in the blockbuster movie Avengers Endgame? In this video, we are going to dive into the world of quantum mechanics and explore the mathematical concepts behind entanglement and we're going to talk about the grandfather paradox as well. So in this video, we are also going to learn how quantum entanglement allows for communications and information transfer across time and how the branching timeline idea sidesteps the issue of logical paradoxes. We'll explore the possibilities of time travel through the lens of mathematics and theoretical physics. Firstly, it's important to note that time travel is a topic that has fascinated many theoretical physicists for decades. In fact, there are many different theories about how time travel could potentially work and what its implications would be for our understanding of the universe. Now, in the case of Avengers Endgame, the concept of time travel was used as a way for the heroes to undo the damage caused by the villainous Thanos, right? However, as is often the case with time travel stories, there were some inconsistencies and logical loopholes in the film's depiction of how time travel works. Nonetheless, we can attempt to analyze the scientific plausibility of the film's portrayal of time travel by looking at it through the lens of quantum mechanics. Specifically, we can explore the concept of entanglement, quantum entanglement, which plays a crucial role in the film's explanation of how time travel works. So let's start our discussion with the topic of quantum entanglement, which is a phenomena in which you have two or more particles and they become linked to each other. So suppose that this is uh, your particle and I'm gonna write this particle in quantum mechanics, we write particles as state functions, right? So, so it, 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 there will be a wave function that is called that would be associated to this particle. And in very short uh, language, this wave function is the quantum state of the particle, which stores all of the information about this particle that can be known inside this wave function or the quantum state. And I'm gonna write it as the state phi one, and the state is written in this way, right? So, so for this particle, this, it has a state phi one, and then you have another particle phi two, right? So phi two denotes the state of this completely separate particle that is separate from this phi one particle, right? Now, as I said, that in quantum entanglement, two or more particles can become linked in such a way that the state of one particle depends on the state of the other particle, which means that if these particles become linked, then you can say that this state depends on this state or this state depends on this state, right? Or both can happen, right? So, so that their states become entangled. That's why we call it entanglement, right? Now, what does that mean? Before we get into what does that mean, actually, let me just also mention over here that the, this distance between these two particles, it is not dependent on this quantum entanglement. It doesn't matter how far the particles are. Maybe this could be one meter, or maybe it could be, I'm gonna say infinity, but uh, let's just, instead of saying that, maybe it is a million meters or even more than that. So even if it's greater than a million meters. So again, the point is that this distance between the two particles does not depend on quantum entanglement, right? So the, these states can become dependent on each other regardless of the distance between them. Now, this means that if you were to measure the state of one of these particles, then you would instantly know the state of the other particle. Doesn't matter how far it is, even if it's light years away from the first particle, you will immediately know the state of the first uh, particle if you know the state of the second particle, since they are linked with each other. So there's a connection between the two. Again, that means that if you know the state of one of these particles, then you would know the state of the other particle. Now, this seemingly bizarre behavior is a fundamental aspect of quantum mechanics. And it also has been experimentally verified time and time again. It is also a key component of many proposed theories of time travel. A, a lot of these theories of time travel, they depend on uh, this idea of quantum mechanics. 
Now, in the context of uh, Avengers Endgame, the heroes use quantum entanglement to travel through time by the means of the quantum realm, as so they call it. Now, the idea is that by using specialized suits to shrink down to subatomic size, they can enter the quantum realm and use its unique properties to travel through time. Well, specifically, they use quantum entanglement to link their present day selves with their past selves. And by doing so, they create a bridge between two time periods that allow them to travel back and forth at their own will. So suppose that this is one time period and you have another time period. What they do is they create a bridge between these two time periods and this bridge allows this sort of a travel. So this is uh, the first time period or the, and this could be the second timeline period. And then you can just uh, go from the second to the first and then come back from the first uh, to the second. So you can go or travel back and forth at your own will. Now the phenomena of quantum entanglement can be described mathematically using the concept of composite quantum system. So I'm going to write this thing down, composite quantum system. Now let's see what does that mean, right? Uh, suppose that we have two particles, right? So these are your two particles. Let's label them A and B. Now these two particles are initially prepared in a composite quantum state. What does that mean? That means that I can write mathematically the state of these particles as psi AB is equal to sum over IJ C, I, J, and the state I of the particle A and the state J of the particle B. Now, let me tell you what does this mean. In this expression, well, as you know, that this is the state of this composite system of A and B. This state is what I'm calling phi of A, B, phi state A, B. And these I state i of a and state j of b they represent the states of particles a and b respectively what about c i j c i j are basically the complex coefficients which determine the probability of measuring each of these uh, possible states right so i and j so th these are the coefficients again that measure the, or determine the probability of measuring each possible states. Uh, you don't have to go into any further uh, mathematics of this thing in, in this video. That's not the goal of this video. It's just to uh, understand or see how quantum mechanics made time travel possible in Avengers Endgame, right? As is the title of the video. All right. Now, suppose that we perform a measurement on our particle A. What would that do? That would cause this particle A to collapse into a specific state i a right so so the, if we perform the measurement on this particle state uh, particle a then it would collapse into this state you would figure out you would see that the particle is in this specific state right now this measurement will cause the composite quantum state which is phi a b to collapse as well and in such a way that this particle b is now in a state that is correlated with this state of particle A. I'll tell you how we can write that mathematically. So now this state, psi, a, psi of A, B, this composite state will go into or transform into this composite state. Let me write it down, phi prime A, B, such that this uh, phi prime A, B now is equal to some over j c i j state i a state j b so again what happened that we performed uh, a measurement on particle a and that performing of measurement caused this particle a to collapse into this state i a and this measurement caused the composite quantum state phi a b to collapse as well and it collapsed again in such a way that particle B is now in the state that is correlated with the state of the particle A.
Now, you'll note that the state of particle B is now dependent on the state of particle A, even if they are separated by large distances. As you can see, there is no distance dependence in this equation anywhere. We did not talk about distance anywhere. And there is no dependence of that distance, which means that even if these two particles are separated miles and miles and millions and billions of miles away, they are still correlated with each other. Now, in the context of uh, time travel, we can imagine using this phenomena to create a bridge between two points in time. If we prepare, for example, uh, two particles in an entangled state, and then we separate them, we can use one particle to travel through time while the other particle or the other, uh, yeah, the other particle remains stationary, right? And so by performing a measurement, on the traveling particle, we can collapse the entangled state and create a correlation with the stationary particle. And that allows us to communicate or transfer information across time. So we have seen how we can communicate or transfer information across time. All right, now let's talk about uh, another important idea in uh, this topic, and that is of the grandfather paradox. Now, one of the most well-known problems with time travel is this paradox, the grandfather paradox. This paradox basically arises when someone travels back in time and does something that prevents their own existence. So, for example, imagine here you are, and what you do is you maybe uh, sit inside a time machine, right? And you travel back in time. And in, back in time, here is uh, your grandfather. And you come back. And what you do is you take a knife and you stab him. You, so what you're basically doing is you kill your own grandfather before he has a chance to father your parent. So you kill your grandfather before... Uh, even your, your father was born, which means that there is no possibility of you being born now, right? So again, this would mean that you were never born, which raises the question, of course, that if you were never born, how were you able to travel back in time to kill your grandfather in the first place? How did that happen? Now, in Avengers Endgame, the writers attempt to sidestep this paradox. And what they did was they introduced the idea of branching timelines. Now, the idea of branching timelines, so mathematically you can represent that structure, by the way. So first I'll draw that structure of branching timelines. So a very rough structure would something would be something like this. So as you can see that from the name itself, these are some branch-like structures. Right? So something like this, and then maybe there is another branch over here that is like this. And then from here, you have another one that is something like this. You'll have to ignore my drawing, but I hope you get the idea of the branching timelines. Right? So now the idea is that when the heroes travel back in time and change something, they create a new timeline. So that's what happened. So maybe there was a changed that happened somewhere over here. And what that change did is that created the two different timelines, this one and this one, right? So they created a new timeline that diverges from the original one. So you can see this is your original timeline and the new ones diverge from the original timeline. What does that mean? This means that any actions that they take in the past will not affect their future since their future is now a completely new timeline that is separate from the past. So again, it will, uh, their, their actions in the past will not affect their future, but it will instead create a new alternate future, right? Now, this thing seems uh, promising at first. However, the concept raises its own set of questions and complications. We're not gonna dwell into those set of complications, but, uh, we're uh, the complications are such as uh, whether or not the alternate futures that they create are just as valid as the original one, right? That's one of the complications. Uh, but nonetheless, it does provide 
uh, a potential solution to the grandfather paradox, the idea of the branching timelines. Right, so with that, I'm going to uh, end uh, this video with some concluding remarks and hopefully the basic idea of how uh, quantum mechanics uh, made this thing possible uh, is sort of clear to you. But uh, the concept of time travel in Avengers Endgame is based on the idea of quantum entanglement. That's what we have seen. And that is what which allows the heroes to create a bridge between points in time. Now, while the film's portrayal of time travel is not without its logical flaws and inconsistencies, it does offer an interesting and scientifically grounded take on the topic. Furthermore, the concept of these branching timelines provides a potential solution to the grandfather paradox. Again, it raises its own set of questions and complications, but uh, the idea of time travel remains a fascinating topic that continues to capture the imagination of scientists and non-scientists as well. Now, quantum mechanics and the theory of relativity provide the theoretical framework for understanding time travel. Uh, also entanglement and the grandfather paradox. So to understand time travel, entangle, quantum entanglement, and the grandfather paradox, you need to have a very good understanding of quantum mechanics and the theory of relativity, which was the Einstein's theory of relativity. Uh, while there are uh, still many unanswered questions and complications surrounding these topics, the use of mathematical equations and models can help us better understand the nature of time and the possibilities of exploring it through the lens of quantum mechanics.